PTC Creo Parametric 3.0 Lesson 8, Part 3. This is the last portion of the lecture lesson. Uh, we will cover how to put the assembly together using the subassembly and then the new part that we created in the assembly itself. So we've already got the part that was created, uh, which is called top-down design because it was done in the assembly. And we're going to start off by adding the subassembly to it. So we're going to click on assemble. And yeah, it looks like I don't have my proper directory. So let me get that first. Manage my session, select my working directory, and open that up. OK, so I'm going to assemble. and. Make sure I get the proper one. Zoom up. That looks okay. Open. Now there's a variety of things you can do. I actually want you to do it like I'm going to do it here. Um, something will be a little bit odd maybe to some of you, but don't worry about it. Just do what I tell you to do. And later, you'll see we're going to edit the assembly. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick on my, well, first I think I'm going to get rid of some of the datum planes and other datum features. <clears throat> and uh, I like to always do, most people like to do the inserts first. It's called inserts, but they're coincidence now. Previously, they were called insert. But basically, you're taking, for instance, a cylindrical, a couple of cylindrical surfaces and constraining them. So I'm, I'm going to pick in here, and I'm going to pick inside of here, like so. And then I'm going to select on the surface of the subassembly on the clamp, and then on the top surface here. And right mouse button, I'm going to flip the constraint, like so. So I've got it's actually uh, placed and it's constrained. But I'm going to uncheck assumptions here, and I'm going to add one more set so that we can swivel the whole top portion, the subassembly. And what I need to do is I need to pick a couple of features, and I'm going to go to New Constraint, and I'm going to pick something that goes down the middle of the subassembly and something that goes down the middle of I'll try to get it down the middle of this one here, but maybe not. Let's try the. There we go. So to the assembly, they're at 90 degrees to one another. And normal, we're going to change that to offset angle offset. And we're leaving it as 90 degrees, but it does mean that when the assembly, we can actually double click on that change to any number we wish and it'll rotate the swivel. We can remember we did the same thing when we put the swivel uh, into this, the swivel part into the uh, into the clamp and we added an extra dimension for the ability to be able to turn this portion on the top and rotate it. So this is fully constrained. Click. Next we're going to put our short stud so we've got to be careful which one we pick this is this is the long stud this is the 3.5 inch stud so we want to make sure we get the correct one it's got the threads built in it which isn't a normal thing to do and you don't usually want to have those threads i'm going to pick the surface of the stud and then the hole you can also put the hole in, you can pick the hole in the plate. It doesn't make any difference. I can come and do that, like so. And if I want to place it a little bit, I can rotate. I mean, I can drag it with my 3D dragger. And in this case, basically, I just want it, oh, about an eighth of an inch. And so instead of putting an actual dimension in there, I can come up here and... I can right mouse button select fix constraint or I can go to the oh, didn't give me fix up here. It's interesting. 
Oh, that's because I picked a new constraint. If I would have continued on, I could have picked fixed constraint right from my right mouse button. As soon as I open something, it doesn't allow that. So fixed constraint. And all that does is it locks it into there with no positioning whatsoever, except for in this case here, the cylindrical surfaces that are constrained. Check. <coughs> Rotate it around. I want to get rid of some of these annoying tags. I can do that. I'll go over to my view and turn off my annotation display. So we have to, you can do that in each individual part, which would be a better place to do it. But right now we're just assembly. All right, so the last component that we're going to put on here is the nut. So model tab, assemble, and the Open this up a little bit bigger. No, where is it? Where is it? I actually ha I know I have it in here a couple of places. I think I had you change the name of it, but I can't see the changed name. So we'll just pick the one that I took from the website. Open. <clears throat> And we can move this around so that it's uh, a little easier to see. Could also open up the other window, remember. And in this case, I might want to rotate it around and zoom way up. I'm actually going to come in here and try to pick up the flat of one of these surfaces. You got to be careful when you're doing this. And then here, pick up the flat on one of these. Let's see if it worked. Looks okay. Grab it, bring it out. No, well, came in okay. All right, so let's close the, uh, well, we don't have to close it. We could actually work on it. Let's pick the bearing surface of the flange nut and the top surface of the clamp and make it coincident. Not have to worry about the third degree of movement. We can allow assumptions. By the way, if we wouldn't have done that and we would have finished it, I want you to look and see what happens over here. If there's a little box in front of your component in the model tree, it means it's not completely constrained. So you want to go back in there by editing the definition of it. And in this case, all I have to do is turn on the assumptions, or I have to create another constraint, one or the other. And when I do that, that'll go away. And you really must do this. You want to check all of these. You don't want that little box in front of any of them. Sometimes it's hard to see and you forget that it's not constrained completely or partially constrained. Some people call it packaged. You put it in there, but it's not locked in. So we've got all of our components. And let me turn off the... Uh, datum features rotate around that and I'm just going to double click over here and you'll see I have a degree so <coughs> excuse me 45 and regenerate and you'll see that it turned it undo same thing over here edit and here's the angle, it's a little hard to see. So let's do a few degrees here. And regenerate. So you can see you could have actually have done that to both of them. And you always have to regenerate. Now, the one thing for information, the bill of materials is always important. So under the tools tab, bill of materials, and we use the top level so it shows everything, all the components and the subassembly. And you can generate this as a report of, in a variety of ways. Close that. Now, one of the things is it looks correct, but if you look at it very closely, you realize that we have the swivel put on the wrong side. 
So we want to swivel the subassembly and the clamp on this side where the counter bores are. Right now it's upside down. So I'm going to go back and select the subassembly, edit the definition of it, and open up the placement tab. And we can see we have coincident. That one's OK. This one is wrong. So the surface here, you can see the clamp design, the arm surface, and then the surface here from the plate. We want to really go to this surface. Let's go to this surface here and remove it and come in here and select the opposite side. And then flip the constraint and middle mouse button. And everything's perfect except for, remember, we fixed the position of the small stud, double-ended stud. So click on that, right mouse button, edit definition. And in this case here, we've got to get rid of one of them. So we can go up here and click on fix and we can delete it right mouse button delete and add a new constraint and this time we could pick the surface on the bottom and we could pick the surface here and then we could drag it to an appropriate place eighth an inch is fine since we're at the stud level not at the level where the flange nut was put on it suppresses that until we're done. Middle mouse button, control D, and you have your assembly. So make sure you save this. And that completes lesson eight.